Welcome back to the final portion. Uh, right now, I'm just inspecting up a few portions, just making sure that everything's clean. I'm just using a jeweler's loop. It's two small magnifying glasses in one. It's really convenient. Um, I got it for a few bucks on Amazon. Definitely worth it. Is an invitation, no time for hesitation. Come and join my family. I live inside of you, but you don't belong. All right, now that everything checks out, we're gonna move on to the last part of assembly, and that's adding the integrated circuits. All right, now that we take them out of their little cases, it's worth mentioning that you don't have to solder these directly to the bullet. I do because I took out the integrated circuit sockets. Now one thing to realize is that there's a small groove at the bottom of them. Be sure that that groove lines up with the small groove on the printed circuit board. It's pretty apparent which way it should go, but just be sure that the grooves line up. Now we get to see me struggle trying to put these in because well, it is easier with the integration circuit sockets. Don't ask me why I took them out. I just don't like them. Um, however, you will solder those on. Just because they're on doesn't mean that they're soldered and connected properly. You'll have to do the same thing once I finally finish putting these on. I'm gonna learn something right now. Alright, I finally got that on. That was a headache and a half, and I still have another one to go. Okay, if you're just going to use the integration sockets, which you should, you will just have to snap it in place over the integration sockets that will already be there. If you're not using the integration circuit sockets, then you're going to have to work quickly because the whole point of them being there is so that you don't damage the integration circuit with excess heat. I am, however, just going to take a small break, inspect it, uh, I'm blowing on it a little, although you can't really tell, uh, let it cool off just a little bit, and just take your time. But then again, if you're using the integration circuit sockets, the heat can't damage them. And you should solder them to the board before you snap in your integration circuits. <laughs> My solder was also getting a little short and uh, starting to heat up a bit. So I'm just going to solder two pieces of solder back together so I can use every little bit. Because I'm cheap. I didn't get them to stick the first time, so here goes round two. Alright, now I have this little ball holding them together so that I can extend the solder I'm using. I'm going to get back to this integration circuit that I'm trying not to damage with excess heat.
Here you can get a better view of how I like to really solder connections together whenever there isn't a giant wire sticking out. I just melt the two together right over the circuit and then pull them apart so that the hot solder goes right over the circuit. It works quickly so I won't damage any integration circuits. Just making an inspection, it looks good, everything's there, all soldered together, no bridges, it's good. Last thing to solder, just make sure that the notches line up with the printed circuit board and on the integration circuit. Otherwise, if it accidentally gets put on backwards, you reverse the leads and that will cause heat and things will explode and that's not really what we're going for. So now I'm going to try to put this second integration circuit on and queue up Benny Hill. Alright, and I finally slid it right into the printed circuit board. Huzzah, that's over. Now it's just soldering the same old way that you should be used to by now. Speaking of, uh, we've done a lot of it, so uh, I think you got another soldering skill increase. Alright, congrats. Uh, and because of that, you will be able to understand this if I speed up this next portion. At this point, I'm just really going to be cleaning some things up, uh, try not to get the integrated circuit too hot, uh, cleaning up connections, um, this isn't really standard procedure per se, but you always want to check and make sure that everything is good and clean. And really by clean, I just mean uh, all the connections look uh, like I said, just kind of like metallic nipples, that's really a good thing to be looking for. Just soldering on the last of the integration circuit. And there you have it. 100% uh, assembled chimp, uh, no screw terminals, and without the integration circuit sockets, just because I don't like them. Everything ought to look nice and clean, and you are done. Congratulations. I think you get another soldering skill level. Yeah, I'll give you a plus one. 
I just want to take this moment to thank you for watching the entire clip. I know that must have been quite a long ordeal. And remember, if this really feels like way too much work just to get a little board done, you can still order it pre-assembled. Just remember, there will always be soldering involved whenever you perform a dual system mod. But hey, if you've got soldering experience already, go ahead and buy it pre-assembled if you want. The choice is yours.